Hi everyone! Welcome back to Sonia's Prep. I am so excited to do this video. Finally, it's been three years since we've started this YouTube journey here with Sonia's Prep. Um, thank you from the bottom of my heart for being a part of my journey, for watching, for subscribing, for liking the videos. It is absolutely incredible and it is all thanks to you. Um, so today I wanted to give back, answer some of your questions. I put up a box on YouTube and on Instagram and I got hundreds of your questions and I've compiled most of them here. So let's get started. <laughs> So to navigate all these questions, I wanted to make it a little bit easier and I decided to you know, separate them into different categories so it'll be easier for you to follow along. So the first section is just basically an introduction about myself and my family. So my name is Sonia and I am the, I guess, founder of Sonia's Prep here on YouTube where I share with you all about my Orthodox Jewish life and how I manage being a full-time working mom, doing YouTube on the side, and I take you along on all of my Jewish holiday preps and inspirations, how I Shabbat meal prep, how I manage to take care of my kids while having a busy household like many of us do. So that's what Sonia's Prep is all about. Um, a lot of people wanted to know our kids and everything. So if you're very new here, you probably don't know. We have five little kiddos. Um, we have two sets of twins that are boy, girl, boy, girl. And then we have a four-year-old boy as well. So it's a busy house with lots of fun, lots of chaos. And I take you along and show you all of those fun things here on my channel. People also wanted to know the languages that we speak in our house. So obviously we all speak English here and we also have, I know Russian fluently. Shai knows Russian pretty well as well. And Shai knows fluent Hebrew. I know a little bit and I know Spanish a little bit. So that's pretty much all the languages that we know. Um, an interesting fact is that when I had all of my kids, the only language that I spoke to them in for the first two years of their lives was Russian. Why? Because my grandparents only speak Russian for the most part, they understand English also. But um, it was important for me that they got um, exposed to a different language for you know brain development. I heard it was very, very good. So all of my kids' foundational first language was Russian and um, they actually still understand it to this day, although they don't speak it, but if I have to tell them something in secret, they'll most probably get it. Next question was, what are our professions? So I'm a school nurse, I'm a registered nurse, and I've been doing school nursing for the past seven years or so. I've been an ER nurse and a rehab nurse um, previously to that. So I've been a nurse since 2009. So that's quite a while. So I do work every single day. I have the option though of not working in the summers because I work for the public school system. But for the past few years, I have been working in the summer because it's more laid back. There aren't as many kids and why not? My kids are in camp. So that's what I basically do for my job. Shai is an industrial psychologist. He's also like an HR. He's a human resources director for a company. So he does that. Did we grow up religious? So my parents were not religious at all. When we um, actually came to America, we started to become more religious. Um, but before that in Russia, it was very, very minimal. Maybe we had like a traditional Shabbat meal, but we weren't, we didn't keep kosher. We didn't keep the holidays to such an extent. Yeah, we didn't eat like bread on Passover, but it was nothing like we are today. Um, so when we came to America, my grandfather passed away and there's this concept of um, saying Kaddish for somebody who's passed on. It's like a blessing to elevate their souls. Um, so my father would go to shul, synagogue, and he would pray and there would be lectures. And my father was always very enticed about learning about his own religion because I guess in Russia, in a communist country, you weren't really allowed to learn about it or practice it. So it was a little bit more I mean, it was removed from him and um, he started to learn about it, he fell in love with it, and we went to yeshiva, which is a private school, and we learned about our Jewish roots as well, and that's how he evolved into being religious. Um, I think every single person, no matter if you grow up religious or not, you have to come to that yourself, and I would say I fully came to it myself at 14. I used to wear like short sleeve shirts. Um, I used to, I guess, rebel in that sense until I got to that stage myself. So I would say at 14 is when I really 
took um, a lot of things upon myself and that's where I am today. Always growing, always trying to be better. Um, but yeah, another question was how long I've been married for. So we just celebrated 16 years of marriage. I can't believe it because I'm only 20, so I don't know how that's possible. But yeah, um, another question is what's my ethnicity? I'm Bukharian, so I was born in Tashkent in Uzbekistan. And my husband is also Bukharian from his parents, but he was born in Israel. And we met each other here in America. We went to elementary school together. And I've known him since the third grade, so I don't know how old was I, I'm eight, I'm very young. Um, so we've known each other for quite a long time. So for those of you who know, I was supposed to do this whole entire interview with my husband, Shai, and we actually did do it, but the quality of it was so poor because we did it late at night. I just decided to redo this entire thing while my husband's at work. I have a day off today. I have a sick kid at home unfortunately I was upstairs sleeping so i decided to do this quickly myself and i might at the very end of this video just include shy with um his uh, interview questions that he had for me which was so good but it was just such poor quality i didn't want to put it out there are a few questions here about shy people wanted to know if he's a picky eater so uh funny thing is, is that i'm the most picky eater in this house <laughs> Um, I have just preferences that I just, I don't like certain things. But Shia has his preferences where he doesn't like certain foods like cooked peppers or um, tomatoes, doesn't like the texture of them. Um, but otherwise he's not the picky eater in the family. It's me. It's really bad. A few questions are about all of our marriage, our shalom bai, peace in the home. Um, the question is, the first question here is, how do you make time for each other with such a large family? And this is from Maria Lagwer. How do you make time for each other with such a large family? Um, in the summers and in the spring time when the weather is really nice, we do go out for walks. We put our kids to sleep. I turn my phone on where I could hear everything in the house and we just go for a nice long walk. We catch up, we schmooze, we talk to one another. We do have date nights. Even if we can't go outside, we'll do something indoors. We'll order in, we'll watch a movie or we'll just, I'll make a dessert, we'll just have some tea. So we just have to steal moments out of our days just to speak with one another, send cute text messages to one another. And I think it's important if you've been married for any amount of time. If you don't work on your marriage, it's not gonna be much of a marriage because it is definitely work and it's not easy. You just have to actually be a participant in the marriage to make it actually flourish and grow just like a plant. You have to water it for it to be nourished and well cared for. The next question is, what practical things should couples be prepared for in a marriage? I think that if a couple goes into a marriage thinking that, you know, once we're married, it's gonna be just this beautiful paradise dream, you have to work on it. You just have to work on your marriage being beautiful, that there should be understanding, lots of communication to be on the same page. So that's my best advice for a couple who's getting married, that it's real life, it's not what you see in the movies. There's things that's, that's gonna come up, there's gonna be issues that you're gonna have to deal with. Like we, we didn't have kids for six years in the beginning of our marriage, which is a huge, I mean, stumbling block, I don't know if that's the right word, but that's a huge thing to navigate as a newly married couple. Um, that's a huge chunk of you know, your, your, your married life. Um, so if we didn't work on our marriage and communicate well and be the forefront for each other, it wouldn't have been much of a marriage, right? So that's my biggest uh, advice to you guys. What is your secret to a healthy and loving marriage? And this is from Miss Linda Alterio. Um, Miss Linda, I love all of your comments. I always see your comments on my videos. You are the sweetest. And what is the secret to a happy and loving marriage? I've said this before in my previous Q and A's that my belief is that when there is no respect between the spouses, it just goes south very quickly and it's very hard to recover. So my best advice is to make sure that you are always having respect for your spouse and that you are and that you deserve respect from your spouse as well. So give your spouse that respect and he in turn should give you that respect. And if not, you have to work on that with the way that maybe you speak to one another, the way that you interact with one another. 
you have to really just re like this is not my friend even though you always want your husband to be your friend but there's like a way a cavalier way that you would speak to a friend or a buddy and that's not your wife or your husband there's a, a different level of respect a different level of admiration um and i feel like once you have that close bond of respect and admiration for one another it's inevitable that you'll be friends with one another and actually want to be in each other's company <laughs> If you would go anywhere on vacation or anywhere on a date, where would it be? We love going away, obviously, um, on vacations or on dates. Um, the, it's more practical to talk about, I guess, a date. It would be somewhere probably quiet without the kids where you could have uh, a meal. I know some people like to go on dates and have activities like rock climbing and jump, I don't know, all these crazy things. I like food, if you guys can't tell. I love to enjoy a good restaurant with nice wine, delicious dessert. So that's my ideal date. But to vacation, I do love Israel. I would love to go back. I've been there twice in my lifetime and I cannot wait to go back. The food over there is unmatched. The hotels, the whole tourist experience is just absolutely beautiful. And the next question was, where do we go on our honeymoon? We went to Puerto Rico on our honeymoon. We waited, I think, a year until we could go. We were both in school. We were both finishing college. And after Shai finished his master's degree in industrial psychology, we booked the trip to Puerto Rico and it was such a beautiful place. We absolutely loved it. So the next portion of the video, a lot of people asked about like religious concepts with, with us. So the first question is, have you ever eaten non-kosher? And this is from Sarah Burns. Um, and yes, I've obviously eaten non-kosher. I didn't grow up religious. We didn't uh, hold to a kosher diet when we were younger. And somebody else asks, if you could ever eat anything that you would want, what would it be? And that's from Argana. Um, I love the kosher bacon, which is like the bacon. So I'm sure that I would love the non-kosher one. So I guess that would be my answer. <laughs> Um, the kosher one, I don't know if you've, if you've never seen it, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll do a whole video about the kosher version of bacon, which is obviously not made from pig, but with like beef fat and meat, which is just delicious. I love that. How do you entertain non-Jewish friends and guests and are they mandated to participate in different um, aspects of the religious ceremony. Somebody else asked that. That's a great question. And of course, we do have non-religious, non-Jewish people come to our homes or we go to people who have non-Jewish members in their uh, family. Maybe it would be like a home attendant or a friend or a work associate. And no, they are absolutely not mandated to participate in any of the ceremony unless they want to. So like with us, like ritualistic washing our hands or drinking wine or having any kind of ritualistic experience they are not mandated to participate at all they could just be there to view things and i think that's just what works best i think it may be awkward for people to uh, to be forced to participate in something that they're not used to so we do leave, leave that up to them the next portion of these questions are more pertaining to me and shy so the question is how did you know that shy was the one and this question is from Danielle. And I would say that I knew that he was the one after we had a fight <laughs> or a disagreement where I I just, I didn't know where this would go in a relationship. And it's normal to have disagreements and fights in relationships. It's, that's a healthy thing. That's how you learn if the other person is there for you or, and is willing to fight for you in a relationship. Whereas in other relationships, I had a disagreement and the guy was like, well, if you want to call it off, you want to make your decision, just let me know. And I, that was like a, you know, a red flag. Whereas with, with Shai in, in this specific circumstance, we had a disagreement and um, he was not willing to give up. He wanted to work on it. He wanted to make it right wanted to fix things and that's a very admirable trait and someone that you are potentially thinking of making a life with and growing a family with because things are you know life are not always perfect and this dreamy paradise things will come up the issues will be there and as long as you have a partner with you that's willing to work and navigate through these difficult life choices and issues um that's how i know that he was the one that was one of the reasons why I knew that he was the one. Um, so that's my answer for that question. 
Next one is, did you ever not cover your hair at home? And this is from Beth Ann. Of course, when I'm at home, I'm not obligated to cover my hair. I can have my hair out. I don't have to cover it by any means, but I tend to 90% of the time have my hair covered. I just feel more put together. I don't have like frizzy hair popping out of everywhere. My, and I just look more presentable. So I do 90% of the time have my hair covered at all times. Um, did you date in college? And this is from Blessed Nana. I did date in college. I started dating when I was 19. The next question is from Tamar Malakov. And her question is, can you explain what you do as a school nurse? So I have different uh, children that I cater to. Some have diabetes. I actually had two little kids who were three and four with diabetes last school year that I had to manage. I had a G-tuber, I think two years before that. I had to give him like G-tube feedings. And I have my general like seizure disorders where I have to monitor the kids. I have my allergies and asthmas, EpiPens that I may have to give. And just the typical um, uh, medications that I have to give for ADHD. So those types of things is what I basically do as a school nurse. I administer medications, tend to boo-boos, um, make sure that kids are okay. I actually did have uh, a little kid that I had to do CPR on last year. He was three years old. And it was like, you have scary moments, but overall, I love doing it. The next question is from Justine Hamarelli, I think. Um, how do you truly lean into the respite of Shabbat with kids who always need you? The duties of motherhood don't pause for the holiday. And absolutely true. Our kids need us at all times, even on Shabbat and holidays. And there's just something about Shabbat and the holidays that even though my kids are around me, it's just so more tranquil. There's just a lot more tranquility. There's no like TV going or radio blasting or iPods on. Um, it's just quiet and serene. And yes, my kids need me, but that's why I'm a mommy. So I'll do my best to take care of them. But because the atmosphere is so serene, I feel like they are a little bit more serene as well, if that makes any sense. Um, and we just do our best. Do they still have fights and scream on Shabbat? Of course they do. Um, do they ask me endlessly for things on Shabbat? Of course they do. But just the whole ambiance is more peaceful, so it just makes for a much more peaceful environment, if that makes any sense. The next question is, I think, the most asked question um, from Rishan. Would you ever write a cookbook? And yes, I do hope one day, one day soon, to finally write a cookbook it is on my to-do list and it has been on my to-do list for quite a while it's just a very laborious project and or in terms of you know compiling all the recipes the photography um getting it published it's just a lot and one day i'll do it what is your least favorite and most favorite chore and this is from katie piglet i love the name katie piglet so cute um, my least favorite chore is, I guess, cleaning. And my most favorite, can you tell, is cooking and getting uh, things ready in the house in that sense. So yeah, that's my answer for that. And the next question is, how do you stay motivated to achieve all of those tasks? Which is from Fiona. Um, I guess to just stay motivated to do certain things that you actually need to accomplish is just, I need to do it. Like I said in my previous videos, <laughs> Um, the faster I'll do it, the faster it'll be over with. There are just things that you need to do in life and you have no choice and you just got to get them done. And that's what I just tell myself. Is it hard? Of course it is. Do I always want to do them? Of course not. But sometimes you just got to do things and, and the faster you do it, the faster it will be over. <laughs> what is your skincare routine and ritual? This is from Faiza Amin. Um, my skincare routine, I only put on uh, Clarins uh, lotion on my face. I do not put any harsh soaps or chemicals on it. I don't do any cleansers or any masks. I don't put any of those sort of things on my face. My mom actually told me when I was a teenager, never, ever, ever put any kind of soap products on your face. It's going to make it dry and make you break out. So ever since then, I every time before bed, I lightly wash my face, remove all my makeup, put on Clarins um, face cream and that is basically it. I don't put any any other thing on it. Obviously I put makeup on it, but that is all. How are you so slim? Well, 
I don't know if people would agree with you on that. I've been getting a lot of questions uh, of like, oh, congratulations, you're pregnant on my channel, which is not true, I'm not pregnant. So I guess depending on the angles that you'll see me in, in my videos, I may look pregnant or not because I've had five kids, two sets of twins, which you know stretched out my stomach, my ab muscles are shot. Um, but I mean, I do my best to make sure that I don't overindulge myself. I try to do a little bit of mix up intermittent, intermittent fasting and just make sure that I eat cleaner. I'm better on certain days and worse on other days. Um, but I just do my very best. Um, the next question is, what is the most enlightening lesson you learned in the past three years that totally changed your perspective in household management? Don't try to do it all. It's impossible. Um, that is the most enlightening lesson that I learned, no matter how much we try our very best. If you have kids, you know that two seconds after you're done cleaning, it'll become an absolute mess. So we just do our best. We try to teach our children to help us out, but that is the most enlightening thing that no matter what, it will still get messy at the end of the day. Just don't be so hard on yourself. How do you do self-care? That's also another um, common question that people ask a lot on my channel and we just do our best. I love to get many petties, love to get massages. I like to just have quiet time. If you're a busy working mom, you know how much quiet just can help rejuvenate you. So if my husband walks in through the door and I've been home with the kids and he comes home at around seven, eight o'clock and I'm just like fed up to here, I have no problem with selling him. I just need, I need a little bit of time to myself and he's great with giving me that time. I am able to go into my room, shut the door, put on some nice tranquil music and just vegetate in peace and quiet. Um, that's another self-care. You just have to know what you like personally and do those things for you that make you happy. I actually am starting Pilates this week. Um, so, and that's like a weekly thing that I'm very excited about doing. It's something where I'm away from the house for an hour at the most craziest time between the seven and eight. That's when we put our kids to sleep. So that's nice to just get away from it all, take care of yourself. So that's another thing that I do for myself. Um, how are you always so put together all of the time? <laughs> um, I'm not always put together. Um, it helps that I have like a schedule where I need to be out of the house to go to work. So obviously I have to put myself together for that. It helps when I, I know, organize myself in, in uh, different aspects when I have Shabbat. I always have to put myself together for that. Um, I'm not always dressed and I'm not always, I'm not always having this like perfectly dressed attire or have this makeup on. Um, there are times when I'm just in yoga pants and pajamas until 11 o'clock. It's... You know, you just live life. I'm normal, just like you are. The next question is a common one as well is, do you have any help around the house to help you maintain it? And absolutely, if and when I do need help around my house, I have no problem, like, you know, asking for help, getting a cleaning lady to come if I need it, asking my husband to participate, asking my children to chip in. And I think that's a huge necessity. If you're able to, if you can afford it, then absolutely have someone come and help you and alleviate that stress from you. The problem is that when you actually admit it to yourself that you need help and you actually get the help that others may look down upon you, which was the case for me uh, maybe like a year and a half or two years ago when I talked about in one of my videos that, yay, I finally got help. I had a cleaning group come and I remember the comments, the absolute insane comments that I got like, oh my God, who does she think she is? Um, she has help, she doesn't even do everything herself. There are plenty of other YouTubers um, who do everything on their own. Um, I was uh, shocked by those comments where instead of uplifting another woman who knows that she needs help and not doing it all herself, um, people choose to like bring people down, which is unfortunate. Don't let that stop you. If you need help, there is no gold medal for driving yourself to the ground, trying to do it all and just making yourself sicker in the long run. Get the help, love yourself a little bit. So absolutely, if I need the help, I do ask for it. The next, I guess, bulk of questions is all about YouTube. So we'll dive into that. 
someone here her name is malcolm payev is writing i'm also thinking of starting my own youtube channel and what is your best advice so my best advice malka is that if you are interested in opening up your own youtube channel youtube itself is such a wealth of knowledge learn how to do it it's not just about you know turning on the camera recording yourself and publishing it there are so many things that go into you know getting your videos um, viewed by other people getting them liked and getting traction on it so definitely look into all of those things before you start um, but don't waste time too long just get started just make a video and you'll learn as you grow and i'm still learning as you know being three years in i'm still not perfect at it my um, number one thing that I'm still working on is my audio for my videos because I'm not um, a professional videographer. I don't really know the right you know, tools to use all of the time. I've used three different mics as a YouTuber and they all have not been so successful. So I'm still learning as you can tell. I'm still evolving and trying to make my videos better for all of you. And the next question is do you get paid through youtube and this is from reva simon and yes when you uh reach 1000 subscribers with 4000 hours of watch time you're able to apply to the youtube partner program through google and you do make some sort of money from it it's very little in the very beginning so the more people watch the more you make and it's actually quite fascinating you can learn all about it on youtube itself um, another person wants to know is a is it a steady income being a youtuber so once again at this point in my life i can't quit my job and just be a youtuber i think it's not as steady as people think it may be you know the more videos you publish the more of um, uh, google adsense you'll be getting the less you publish the less you'll be getting and there are ebbs and flows in your income from youtube so for me at this stage of my life it's not where i would be able to actually quit my job and be able to be a full-time youtuber it's been three years since you started youtube how did it affect you as a person and did you become more organized or less and that is from bella k so um opening up this youtube channel three years ago has actually made me much more of an extroverted person i'm extremely shy i don't just come up to people and talk to them um that's not me i wait usually wait for people to talk to me i feel um that youtube has really opened me up where i'm able to you know let my creativity out be more vocal um so i actually do think that was a very positive thing in my life so thank you youtube for that another question is does everybody at my job know that I'm a YouTuber or that I do YouTube part-time? And actually, it's funny because I think last year is when the first person at my job was like, Sonia, I saw you on YouTube. And I was like, oh my God, they discovered it, you know? <laughs> I never actually talked about it. I just kept it quiet. I didn't really, you know, publicize it that I'm doing this part-time. And it was actually so funny, the shock on their face. And then obviously one, like the word spread and a lot of people now at my job know that I do it. I don't know if everybody does, but um, it's, it's a weird a little bit because it's a completely different side of me where they would see me at work. So for those of you who um, are working for me, hi. <laughs> um, it is definitely just like a little bit weird because it's just completely different, you know, than work. Um, but yeah, that's funny. Now stay tuned for a few short clips from my interview with Shai. So, Sonia, three years on YouTube. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? I feel like I was a baby when I started and I've learned so much. I've come a long way. I've developed skills that I never thought I would be able to. Um, I basically became a producer, a filmmaker, a photographer, an editor, which is absolutely insane actually i didn't think i would ever be able to learn these things and actually do those things what are the most difficult questions or um some comments that really bother you or disturb you or what are the most surprising comments that you've received i love getting all of your comments it means the world to me when you actually comment on my videos because i love interacting with you guys uh, some of the comments that have bothered me well, the, the thing about YouTube is that it actually develops a thicker skin in a person. I really, I'm a very sensitive person. <laughs> um, <laughs> comments affect me a lot. 
Um, and I've learned that the more comments I receive that are negative, the more thicker my skin gets. And there are, of course, things that still bother me, that still affect me. Um, but actually, I just had a comment where somebody wrote that I'm an atheist, I, I don't believe in anything, but watching your content has really made me see religion in a different light, which was like, whoa. That's beautiful. That's amazing. I, I, I was lost for words. I couldn't believe it. Um, and those are my, my favorite comments. Of course, you have the typical hater comments also. Um, I keep some of them around and I block the rest of them. <laughs> and that's pretty much all you can do on YouTube. You know, one of the biggest questions that I get all the time is how does your wife do it? She's always so put together. The house is always clean and in good shape. So the answer that I always tell them is that that's what's on the camera. So honestly, one day I'm going to come home when you're least expecting it. You keep saying that. <laughs> and I'm going to record the back end of what's happening behind the scenes at our house. I'm nervous for that, but I do think it's, <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous about it, but I do think it's uh, important. Um, you want to see that, right? To showcase, <laughs> let us know in the comments. Because even though YouTube is like this highly edited piece of content that's like 20 minutes, and you only are seeing what I want you to see. You're not gonna see me, you know, being upset at the kids for not listening. You're not gonna see my kids having a tantrum. You're not gonna see the pile of dishes on, in my sink at the end of the day because um, there's a certain element of, of, of giving inspiration to the person who is watching where everything is clean and serene and beautiful, which is also, there's an element to that as well, of posting that kind of content because it motivates the person but I do feel that what you're saying is true to put out content and not in the best of light because that is reality at the end of the day. Not, not everything is perfect. There are messes that need to be cleaned. There are children who need to be disciplined and things like that. So that's definitely, I guess, important to showcase one day and that'll be a very interesting video. I ask, what's next for Sony's prep? Um, so I have a lot of dreams and aspirations still want to do that cookbook that I mentioned for the past, what is it, three, two, three um, Q and A's. Um, it is a very big project I was to undertake and one day I really do hope to do it. I know a lot of you have asked for it and one day I will, I will. Um, what's next for Sonia's prep in terms of YouTube? I, there's a lot going on behind the scenes with YouTube and I think that um, for a little bit I might scale back so if you don't see me posting a video every single Sunday like I have been for the past three years wow. I think I'm going to be scaling back for some reasons um, you'll still see me I'm still here I just won't be posting as often I just want to know are you still gonna cook <laughs> I'm still gonna cook you won't starve <laughs> that's the number one question I have no doubt um, <laughs> It's just, you know, YouTube, to produce a video, it actually takes between 15 to 20 hours to produce one video. With filming it, editing it, creating a thumbnail, uploading it, and taking care of all the things that you have to do after you upload a video. So it really does take a huge chunk of my free time. So I just want to, you know, with, with the holidays coming up, I might just scale back just a little bit, but you'll still see me around. Wow, that's incredible news. What are the most, what are some of the most enlightening comments or inspiring comments that you've received that allowed you to continue doing YouTube? There are people who, who never really, like they said, we never even kept Shabbat, we didn't even know what that was, but through your videos, we saw how beautiful it was and we started to keep Shabbat in our homes and you've inspired us and it really just wants like, brings tears to my eyes because it's, I mean, I never thought I would have like I would affect people in any sort of way in my life to that extent and it's just I have no words it's really inspiring to me because I I can't even talk about it because it's very actually right. it touches me a lot yeah well that's it guys I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got to know me just a little bit better through these questions and answers if I didn't answer one of your questions, it's probably because I already answered it in a previous q and I'll have them all linked. I think I did three other ones. I'll have them all linked in the description box. So feel free to check it out. And I'm so glad that I got to talk with you guys here like this because I don't do this often at all. 
Thank you so, so much for watching and subscribing and liking the videos. I love you guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time. Happy prepping from my family to yours.